Okay, going with the same theme as last time. I've never actually made chili myself before, so I figured I'd give it a try. A couple of the bloggers that I follow have done the same thing, so uh, I guess this is kind of me challenging them to a cook-off, even though I don't know what I'm doing, so I'd definitely lose. Anyways, I've got uh, hot chili powder, spicy paprika, stewed tomatoes, not sure if I'll use both cans or not. Uh, that was one cup of dried beans, and then I reconstituted them. Then I got a bunch of mushrooms, some garlic, onions, celery. Then I'm going to use a pound of venison burger. And then I'm pretty sure I'm breaking some sort of law because that is turkey bacon instead of real bacon. I know somebody is dying because of that, but anyways, those are the ingredients. Now let's get to cooking. Okay, so the first step is to get all of your meat cooked first. So I got the big pot that this is going in and uh, browning the hamburger and bacon in there. I've got it over medium high to medium high heat actually. And just gonna let that cook through. I'm adding salt and pepper right now. And uh, I'll add the other dry stuff later. So that's the first step. Alright, the meat is just about done, but here's one last thing that I want to say. This is where my chili is going to set itself apart. Most uh, health people will tell you to drain that fat, but I'm going to leave it in there because, believe it or not, there's quite a bit of water in there mixed in, and venison is extremely lean, and turkey is also leaner than regular bacon, so I'm going to leave that in there for flavor. And I'm going to say that that amount of fat really isn't going to hurt any part of your diet, unless you're leading up to a bodybuilding contest, and in which case, I don't know why in the hell you're eating this anyways. So, anyways, next step is the vegetables, and I'll throw those in there, but I'm not going to show you how I do that, because I only have one hand, and I don't want to look like a monkey humping a doorknob. Okay, so you can see that I've added the vegetables now. Uh, like I said, I didn't think I really needed to show you me putting them in there because, well, you can figure out how to get the vegetables from point A to point B, but I'm just going to let those cook through, let the flavors uh, blend together, and uh, let the mushrooms release some of their water, so that way I know a better idea how much liquid I'm going to need for all this. So, like I said, cook this for whatever it takes, another probably five minutes, and then we can start adding the spices and the tomatoes. Well, there's been a development in this story. I was digging through my freezer and I happened to come across some other spices. So, I'm also going to be adding some cumin and some cayenne pepper as well, along with the chili powder and paprika. I think that should really kick things up and give it some more layers of flavoring. Alright. The onions are pretty soft, and looks like the mushrooms are for the most part done, so now it's time to add the dry ingredients. As we all learned last time, I don't measure anything. I'm using my one teaspoon measuring spoon, but that's just so I can actually put the stuff on there without looking like a moron. So that, I guess that was one, and I'll probably go with two teaspoons of the cayenne pepper. I like things spicy. And don't forget, there's two pounds of meat and a lot of onion and celery and stuff in there, so if you want to taste these things, you really got to add more than what you think, probably. Uh, cumin is pretty strong, and I just dumped it all in one spot there. So I'm going to go with one teaspoon on that. Next up is the paprika which I'm pretty sure it's mostly just for flavor, or for color, so since this is already a pretty red, I'll just do one teaspoon of that as well. And then, because it's in a small bag, I'm putting in the chili powder, which is kind of a staple, so that's a lot, and I think that's about right. I have no idea how much. One thing that I do remember or that I forgot while I was shopping and I remembered it once I got back is 
jalapeno or habanero peppers. That would have been delicious in here, but I forgot, so maybe next time. Okay, the last thing that goes in is the beans. You want to make sure that you put all your dry ingredients in first, so that way you know exactly how much liquid needs to go in there to make this into a chili rather than just a stew. And yes, I just burped right there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. See what happens when you get a dirty kitchen? So, first can of tomatoes goes in. That is not very liquidy. This probably is going to turn into a stew. Absolutely. Give that a stir. And even though I have that other jar open, and now it's probably going to go to waste, I think this really needs some liquid. So what I'm going to do is reach up into my cabinet and get my tomato juice. That way I don't have to worry about any more solids. And I can't open it with one hand. So I'm putting it up. There we go. So like I said, I want liquid in here, so I'm going to dump a bunch of this in there. And I have a feeling that the mushrooms are probably going to absorb some of it, and the beans weren't reconstituted completely, so they're also going to absor absorb some. So I'm going to go ahead and toss some more in, so I can pick it up. And there you have it. I'm going to let this simmer for probably an hour or so, just for the fun of it, and uh, let you know how it tastes. I just tasted it, and uh, chili is pretty damn good. Oh, look at this. We welcome you to Soul, Outland, Bowfield, and Green Bay. I think I just jizzed in my pants.